Oh my goodness. Happy 2024. <laughs> Can you guys believe it? Not going to lie. I'm a bit nervous because it's been two months since we've had our podcast. So I'm like, what do I say? What do I do? We are in 2024. Welcome back to the Home Sweet Home Live San Antonio podcast. I'm excited for 2024, but I'm excited for our first podcast for 2024, our first guest. She's incredible. She has great personality. I can't wait for you guys to meet her. She's actually a business coach. So I think that is like the best way to bring in 2024 is to have someone on the podcast that helps other people. So I think 2024 is all about fun. It's all about helping people grow and to get out there and just just be the best themselves they can be, have the best business that they can have. So I'm going to let Heather, or introduce Heather. Hi, Heather. Hello. I love you so much. I'm okay, happy so to be here. <laughs> Heather Bame is here. She's a business coach. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm super excited to get started. So I'm a business coach and a mom. <laughs> Most of what I do is work with clients to get clarity on their vision and their business. And I feel like clarity drives action. So if you know where your business is going and what results you want to accomplish, you can work that all the way back to knowing what you need to do today, the next day, this week, month, yes. year to make it happen. And that's, that's what I do. Okay, perfect. Okay. Let's just start with, cause I have so many things to talk about, but <laughs> let's start with the beginning. Did you grow up in San Antonio? Tell us about how you ended up in San Antonio. Oh, okay. That's fun. I did not grow up in San Antonio. Okay. I grew up in Dallas. Um, and I actually met my husband when we went to A&M. I continued on at A&M and continued and got my degree. Uh -huh. He partied a little too hard and out. <laughs> oh. We ended up staying friends and then he moved up to Dallas. So this is all relevant. He came up to Dallas to to date me and get his college degree. Okay. And we ended up getting engaged. And when we were in Tennessee, we had moved out there uh -huh. talking about, okay, like we're married now, we're ready to start a family. Where are we going? Dallas or San Antonio? And San Antonio has this trait that very few other cities I've ever seen have. Mm -hmm. what Those trait people is that? that are born here uh -huh. seem to come back. At some point, they can mm. leave, they can go live in other places, but they come back like a mm. homing beacon. Yeah. So I was like, A, I want to have kids that come back to me <laughs> when they're adults. I love that. Yeah. Um, we did not do that in Dallas. We all scattered to the winds. We just had no roots there. Yeah. Um, and his parents are 30 minutes away in Castroville. Mm. Um, that was a big draw, too. So okay. We chose San Antonio, and I moved knowing nothing about it. I was uh -huh. just like, family homing beacon don't really understand it but we're going and i loved it i mm -hmm. live in a couple different cities and this is my favorite one i yeah. just fit right in love yeah. the big city with a small town feel yes perfect i describe san antonio like that all the time <laughs> what did you go to school for <laughs> what did you get a degree in <laughs> <laughs> Animal science. No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if you can do that already. Total left field. <laughs> I honestly should probably be like a bachelor of science and that'll sound a little bit more official. But I was gonna be a veterinarian. I love it. Mm -hmm. So why what what kind of changed that that route for you? Well, it's interesting because I work with a lot of people who are like, I have always known that I want to be an entrepreneur, I wanna be mm. a business person, I wanna I wanna forge my own path, and I am not that. I did not want to be an entrepreneur. I grew wow. up watching my dad for business. It looked terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah, yuck. I uh -huh. literally remember thinking owning a business sounds gross. Uh -huh. I want to be a veterinarian and work for someone and make money and help animals yeah. and be done. Um, and going through college, it just was one of those things where I wasn't quite passionate about it to do mm. the work required to get into veterinary school. Okay. And, you know, I could have turned that around, but I was looking at it being like $100,000 in debt for something that I'm not even mm. quite passionate about to like go do the requirements for, like the yeah. volunteering and eh, something shifted. I don't really know what, but I was like, no, I'm going to go figure it out and just get a job after college. And it was a winding path. Yeah. But here we are today. Because that is like everything that you against you were actually I know. doing here i am it just, <laughs> did you just like fall into that or was it like a series of events where it just kind of you're like oh like i'm drawn towards this path it it's, was very much kind of a series of stumbling events yeah. i feel like that, you hear that a lot but my story was really weird and kind of all over the place yeah i just like i use nepotism 
to get a job right after yeah. college. <laughs> I got a job as a photography assistant at my dad's commercial mm. photography studio. I was like, great. Nice. I'm making $30,000 a year. Killing it. Rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a photographer, I mean. Oh, that's... I wasn't even the photographer. I was just an assistant. Oh. I was just like, oh my <laughs> gosh, you're going to pay me real money? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I worked my way up. And that's the thing. Like when you work hard in the corporate world. The, the bar tends to be a little low. Like, mm. it's shocking a little bit how people are just like, I'm going to do the bare minimum yeah. and just skate by. So I was able to work my way up fairly quickly. I went from assistant to project coordinator and mm-hmm. then moved over to their, like, corporate side. Um, and then my husband got a job in Nashville. So I was yeah. like, you're going to marry me. <laughs> I'm coming with you. <laughs> oh, you better do it. Mm. Um and that, that's where, like, things really started to turn to where they are today. Because I got a job as a project manager at a wholesale signage company. Mm. And I was supposed to be a project manager, but the company was going through changes. Their mm. previous owner had died a few years before I came on. The son took yeah. over. Mm-hmm. And just within me being hired, enough people left the company and just left it in chaos that I was effectively operating as a COO. Mm. within six months of being hired at this company. I was like 25. Yeah. And I did not know what I was doing. (laughs) It was bad. Like, (laughs) I would just drive to work at... Just faking it till you make it. Just so anxious. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh I didn't have the tools, the skills, the knowledge that Mm -hmm. I have now, or really the ability to say no. Mm -hmm. There was just no boundaries between being asked to do something. And of course I'm going to do it. Yeah. You've hired me. I'll just say yes to fault. Mm. So I got a crash course in basically running a company from point of sale to completion. So not the sales side, but pretty much everything else, the customer facing, the project management, the manufacturing side, really just running a manufacturing team, the timelines. And it was just chaotic, Mm -hmm. implementing systems and processes, documenting them, just yeah. trying to create order out of what, looking back, I realized was pure chaos. <laughs> and and you now, did the best you could with what you had. Exactly. Now looking back, I'm like, I would love that challenge now. Yeah. I would come in and be like, this. I'm perfectly placed for that now. But yes. at 25, it was a nightmare. And I look back and be like, oh, girl, I would have taken you out of that role in a hot second. I would have moved you around yeah. <laughs> and put someone else there. But hey. Yeah. You know, so it taught um, you something. It taught me yeah. so much. It's it's interesting because like you think, oh, I'm going to tell the stories of my successes, mm-hmm. but most of the time you don't learn a lot from success. You learn a lot more from failure. Yeah, exactly, it resonates harder, and it teaches you more. And being a it's little more miserable, yes, cool. That's mm-hmm. a great catalyst for yeah. change, right? <laughs> exactly. It's just wild. <laughs> So I know, of course, Gabriel and I are realist. We're, 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 mm-hmm. we're realtors, but you are also <clears throat> a realtor. Yes. So tell us about how you got into real estate. Um, well, once uh, that company kind of came to a conclusion, they ended up selling it. So mm-hmm. it was a successful exit for them. But for me, I got restructured out. Yeah. And so basically I was left no job trying to figure out what I wanted. And I knew I didn't want to do that again. I didn't Mm want to ever have a boss again because I just really realized that I didn't know how to say no. That was on me, but also like that was a crazy (laughs) position I was put in. So I was like, what am I going to do to own my own future and make a lot of money? Yeah. Real Real estate. estate. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to get my real estate. Uh Uh, I know everybody who's ever been in real estate laughs at them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Because it's so easy to make money. All the people are going to come running because they know me and they're going to be ready to buy and sell. (laughs) Exactly. And I pretty quickly realized in real estate that um, I did not know how to sell. I knew how Mm. to project manage. I knew how to, once you get the client, fulfill the contract, the transaction. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, you know, those are things that are not easy, but they are step-by-step processes, you know, as long as you've got someone to call, you can figure that out. Mm -hmm. But the obtaining clients, the making them trust you, the lead generation. I read um, Millionaire Real Estate Agent Mm -hmm. uh, by Gary Keller before I even got in. So I had a good idea. 
Yeah. Like I thought I intellectually, I was like, I know what it yeah. takes. A, to B, be a real C, D. Agent. That sounds super easy. I can do that. I mean, yeah. Like, obviously, these people should just be doing open houses constantly, and they're going to make a ton of money. <laughs> and they're going to... Because the people who walk into open houses are totally ready to buy right now. From you. From you. <laughs> and they're not going to go to the exact same house next door and buy from that agent or the listing. Like, it's just... Mm-hmm. I had... I thought I knew what I was getting into. And the thing is, I think I uh, underestimated my skill at it because I feel mm-hmm. like people from outside sales like they're not sales capacity mm-hmm. and they do operations they look at sales people and they think oh that's that's just a skill they have that's mm-hmm. just a talent that sales people have but it's not yeah. I am not a natural salesperson mm-hmm. it was pure <clears throat> practice and work yeah that I needed and I had no idea going and I was like I obviously I can talk to people and I like talk a good game. I can sell. No. Um, so, yeah, I, I realized that fairly quickly. I was just not doing the amount of business I wanted to be doing. Yeah. Um, and really, like, didn't know what I was doing. So at that point, um, I happened to have a colleague in my office. She had a coaching call that she was, you know, had already paid for, but she was going out of town. She was like, Heather, take this. Like, mm. just meet with her. I'm not going to be utilizing this. I already paid for it. So you use it. And I had a 30 minute coaching call with her and I was like, Hmm. Okay. That sounds great. You know, she was, you know, helping me walk through my problems. She was giving me some clarity on what my goals actually were. And at the end of the coaching call, she was like, you know, here are my prices. Mm -hmm. I think I could really help you. And I was like, I can't afford you, ma'am. Like (laughs) I think her prices at the time were like a thousand dollars a month. month. Yeah. And I was Pretty grand typical. total of zero dollars a month okay <laughs> i mean i had some cushion you have to in real yeah, estate but yeah, yeah. i was like i can't afford you and she goes heather you can't afford not to hire me yes yeah i know a lot of them say that yeah and i came from a background of being a higher level athlete mm-hmm. and you always have a coach yeah and i was like well you know what i'm gonna give you three months mm-hmm. and i'm gonna trust you 100 percent and you better make me my money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, she did it. She did it. Uh, shout mm-hmm. out to Elizabeth Curry. because She's an amazing coach. Uh, so within three months, she was making me consistent income. And within six months, I was doing more business than nice. I, I would have thought possible. I didn't quite hit my goal the first year. Yeah. But I was only just shy. My goal year one was to to make a hundred thousand dollars in income yeah and i made 94 and that still bothers me um yeah. <laughs> but i did it mm-hmm. and i felt really good about it so i saw a lot of traction using her coaching mm-hmm. and just benefiting from that mentorship and that that unbiased third party who at the end of the day was unaffected whether i succeeded or failed because that's on me yeah but she could tell me straight up if i was working hard enough or if I wasn't quite working hard enough, mm-hmm. or I wasn't being a little too hard on myself. And that was so nice to have. Yes. And then helped me work through strategies that not just how to succeed in real estate, mm-hmm. but how will you succeed in real estate? Yeah. Because what works for one person does not work for exactly. someone else. And that was just mind blowing for me. Yeah. And I think it's really important for almost everybody who's going out and trying to build a business. <laughs> Absolutely. Not just like a real estate business, but yeah. just any business in general. So, were you inspired by that phone call? Like what got you, of course, now real estate into more, because I know you're doing more business coaching than mm-hmm. it. So what got you to What's the that? switch? So I was doing a lot of real estate. I mm-hmm. was, I was, I was successful at it for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, the thing was, it's residential real estate, mm-hmm. and I had leveraged out quite a bit of it. You know, I wasn't showing houses. I hated showing houses. It's mm-hmm. like my least favorite thing. You'd think that that's the fun part. Didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Um. But I, I was pretty well leveraged. I was home more. I had my daughter, be- yeah. and that was important to me to be home more. But I was still not present mm. when I was home because I was running like, yeah. I think one of my best months I had like fifteen closings mm-hmm. in one month. It was an amazing month. Yeah. Um, so I'd be sitting there, and I remember her just seeing her play on the floor, and I'm like writing yeah. a contract <laughs> and yeah. that went on for about six months and I wasn't like in a great mental space at the time either because I got really tied to my clients emotions residential real estate mm. is highly emotional it is and that didn't quite fit my personality because who oh boy I bought in hard to mm. their like a builder would delay a closing and my clients didn't have a place to live for two weeks and mm. I knew it wasn't my fault and there was nothing I could do about yeah. it but it hit hard yeah. and so you become invested in your clients and in their yeah journey and in their story Mm -hmm. and to an extent it does make you i think a good realtor to be invested but like 
There's Mine a, there's was boundary. not. There, there, there's a yeah. boundary that I, I wasn't maintaining very well. Mm -hmm. Again, just looking back and I just wasn't as present with my kid yeah. as I wanted to because I was working a lot. I was mentally not present. And then on the weekends, I would still jump out if my showing agent was already showing a person and another person wanted to mm -hmm. go see. Of course, I was going to jump out and go show them a yeah. house. You can't not. Um, so I was struggling with that and I started talking to my coach about it. You know, she focused mostly on real estate mm -hmm. and we were just talking through this for a few months, just mm -hmm. like, I am not happy. Mm. Like I hit the goals I wanted to monetarily, but, but I didn't mentally, have any time yeah. or energy to spend them. Mm -hmm. I was completely wiped out. So it's just not really doesn't feel worth it. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't fun. It wasn't giving me energy. Mm -hmm. It was actually sucking it away from me yeah. to a point where I, you know, I just, I was feeling more apathetic. And so she was working through that with me too. And she's not a life coach. She doesn't want to be a life coach, which same. <laughs> like not no hate to life coaching. It's yeah. just a different ball game. Um, but she was trying to help me work through that. Like, what are your skills? What are your talents? And what, mm -hmm. what do you like to do? And so we were working through that because one of my favorite mm -hmm. things is the strategy. Like, how are we going to get you into this property in a way that makes sense for you? And I was always great at working through those tricky problems. Yes. The ones that like... I had a, a, a closing that no one else could make work. The transaction actually terminated through the builder. Mm. And like, you know, you figure out an alternate way. It was just something yeah. I like doing. And she was like, you know what? You've got the personality and the skill set for coaching. Mm -hmm. Our coaching organization is opening up certifications. Why don't you try this? Mm -hmm. Just just see, see if you like it. And yeah. I was like, you know what? Can't hurt. Yeah. What you do seems nice. <laughs> you <Yeah>. just <laughs> hang out and talk to people all day. Yeah. That sounds great. So I did the the certification, uh -huh. um, just the first part, and I loved it. It was like all the things I really liked about real estate mm -hmm. and about business, yeah. But without a lot of the things that I did not like, because coaching the whole whole thing is looking from an unbiased third party perspective. Yeah, kind of takes the emotions out of it. It takes the emotions out. So it's not so taxing. And ultimately, it's not up to me as a coach to tell people mm -hmm. what to do. It's helping to guide them because it yeah. doesn't matter if I would do it differently. Mm -hmm. because it's not about what can you do because mm -hmm. everybody can figure that out they can go yes. to chat gbt now yeah. <laughs> google there's a billion books YouTube. out there that tell you mm -hmm. how you can build a successful business how you can yeah generate lots of money but it's about what will you do yeah you know and so if one thing works for one person it may not work for another and so helping people figure out not not exactly mm -hmm. a solution a solution but what is your solution to the problem was it i love it yeah. I would do it for free <laughs> yeah. if I didn't have to make money, which yeah. like eventually we'll get there. But I just fell in love with it. It was something that gave me energy mm. in a time when I didn't have a lot of energy. And I was like, nice. oh, my gosh, let me get more of this. So um, I got the full certification. I, I bit the bullet and decided to go um, go for coaching. Tried to overlap coaching and real estate for a little bit. Yeah, um, that doesn't many, work. Yeah, you know, spreading yourself too thin. Yeah. Yeah. On one hand, real estate grabs your attention. I mean, those guys they need answers now. Yeah. It's it's not Title, a lender, yeah. buyer, seller. Yes. You know, there's great ways to build boundaries in real estate, and there are ways to handle yeah. it. Um, I wasn't great at that. <laughs> and uh -huh. you know, it's just one of those things. This is the dollar productive activity that is giving you the big paycheck yeah. versus this one that is doing nothing right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided to just, you know, draw a line, mm -hmm. cold turkey, and, and go for coaching and just yeah. start really building that business rather than maintaining and keeping building yeah. the real estate. And it worked out for me. So nice. yay. So, okay. So now you're doing coaching, right? You just mm -hmm. started. What are you do what kind of businesses do you help most? Do you help like real estate businesses? And also, do you stick with just San Antonio businesses or do you branch out for other cities? So locations? I can, you know, I, I coach on Zoom, so I can help mm -hmm. anybody anywhere. But obviously I'm here yeah. in San Antonio. So you know like the market or activity. Yeah. And okay. I, and and I, I'm when it comes to lead generation, because no matter what your business is, you're gonna have to lead generate yeah. unless you just spend a ton on marketing mm -hmm. and have people coming to you, which when I say a ton, it's going to take a ton and you still have to convert. Yeah. Um, and I'm just not a huge fan. I cold called. That was how I built my real estate business. Mm -hmm. And I did not enjoy that. Like mm -hmm. I was good at it, but didn't yeah. enjoy it. So I decided really early on to build coaching 
differently through yeah. networking, through doing things that weren't going to suck the life out of me, yeah. going out in the community. Um, and so when it comes to my clients, they always say your ideal client is you. Mm-hmm. And so I went out trying to find like those burnt out, overworked, yeah. stressed out, anxiety people. And it's funny because I didn't end up getting that as a client. Yeah. <laughs> um, my coaching business has kind of gone in two directions. There's the mm-hmm. one-on-one coaching. And actually the person that I one-on-one coach is more of like a, like the visionary type. They have these big ideas, mm-hmm. like the, the big aha light bulb moments, mm-hmm. but the structure, the organization, the mm. clear clarity on this is the result I yeah, want yeah. is not always there. Mm-hmm. And that tends to be my client. So, I mean, it spans, I've had, um, auto mechanic shops, florists, contractors, um, commercial real estate, um, virtual assistant. Mark's yeah. one of my clients. So just a, a span of industries, but it's a personality type more than it is yes. an industry type. Um, and it's actually become an advantage for my clients because the one thing I don't do is give them the answers because I can't. Like I tell them. Yeah. I'm experienced in real estate, wholesale signage. Those are the two industries that I have a lot of experience in. Yeah. But outside of that, I'm going to ask you questions and rely on your expertise to yeah. to figure out an answer to your problems. Um, and it's worked really well. And I then the other it. side is training. I, I do a lot of trainings. What kind of trainings do you find yourself chasing, like going after those trainings? Or do people come to you for a certain amount? Of, like what kind of training do you do? So with the trainings, um, it's 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 not like, hey, I'm going to buy a ticket and go to the training on this subject. Okay, yeah. um, what my training side of my business looks like is more like larger contracted trainings. So a couple of my clients, uh, Northeast ISD, I did a large training contract for their continuing mm. education division. Um, and that was focused because I always build the these bigger trainings based on what results are you looking for from this? Yeah. I feel like a lot of people come in, they have trainers and they teach like, this is the skill. This is the thing to do. Um, and it works. Sometimes it doesn't, they just kind of, yeah. Like light bulb moment in the moment. And then it never comes back around. So I always ask like, what do you want for them? It was retention. Mm. They wanted like seasonal staff retention because it was just such a churn and burn. They Mm -hmm. had, they had like something like 20, 30% retention rate of wow. that, that staff set. So we came in or I came in and we really trained on rather than managing coaching, like mm-hmm. making this a culture that your staff wants to come back yeah. to, even though it is seasonal, you're going to have churn. Like there's no way to prevent it mm-hmm. because of the seasonality of the job set, but yeah. you can make people tell their friends that this job is great because yeah. the people really care about you really and they coach you reputation. to succeed. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And so with them, um, we did coach that training contract for a year and they increased retention from somewhere like, I can't remember if it was 25 or 30% to 70%. Wow. Just in the span of that year. It was great. (laughs) Still super proud of it. And that's just from working with the managerial yeah. staff on a monthly basis. So that was awesome. And I was like, okay, I really like doing this. Mm-hmm. And then um, my lo- other one that I, I really enjoyed doing was with uh, the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, actually. actually. Nice. And I just finished that one up. Um, it's BizConnect. It's a women and minority-owned business program mm-hmm. that the chamber got the opportunity to present through the U.S. Chamber they got a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to mm-hmm. basically pour into the women and minority owned businesses here in San Antonio. Yeah. And we had a cohort of 24 businesses okay. that came in and we did an eight session series over mm-hmm. the last six months. And they were full day sessions with coaching calls in between that were focused on just different aspects of businesses and growth and scale. I love that. It was amazing. It's, yes. it's been so much fun. And seeing the collaboration between the different business owners, they've just gotten new ideas from each other in a way Mm. that, you know, the same industry approaches problems the same way. Yeah. But different industries have left field ideas that end up working. Yeah. It's been great. Very cool. That was one of my, I kind of leading into my next question as being a business coach, what has been your greatest kind of project or the the one that fulfilled you the most and why that's the thing i i really get a lot of fulfillment just on the day-to-day even outside of like 
like paid clients because my favorite thing is when you walk away from a session or a training more excited about your business than when you came in. Yeah. Because I think it's so easy. It feels so good. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, you know, when you get that inspiration and that energy burns brighter and you're like, yes, I am going to achieve like, my dreams. Right like, yes. Yes. <laughs> this, this isn't this, crazy. I can yeah. do it. This is the year. Yeah. yeah. And uh -huh. it happens in, in bursts. And like, if I can help someone go from being like, okay, like my business is just kicking my butt right now. Cause we've all been there. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business owner, if you're someone with an irregular, non-guaranteed income. Yeah. You've sat at your desk or on your chair and been like, what am I doing? Yes. What job postings does Indeed have? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it just, I mean, it happens, I think, not acknowledging yeah. it. Um, but yeah, when someone leaves a conversation with me or a session and they're just like, mm, I came in just like beat up about this problem, mm -hmm. but now I know exactly what I'm going to go do. Yeah. And I'm going to get that much closer to my goal. So you know, there are projects where I've achieved like cool things, but that's my favorite thing about coaching. I totally do agree with like the whole burnout. I mean, I'm really blessed to kind of work with my husband. I know a lot of people <laughs> walk in, they're like, "Ew, I could never work with I my I could partner. never work with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's crazy. We just mesh really well or the things he's good at and all that other stuff. But I got to a point where I was just like, we were just what last year, just work, work, work. Mm -hmm. And there was no like breathe, sleep, work, that's it, and eat, and just hit a burnout. And this year is kind of like we've developed better strategies to that. And I didn't mm -hmm. even know I was on the brink of a burnout. So I can totally understand how um, a coach can really help. Sometimes that's not even like, of course, if you're an entrepreneur, you're emotionally connected to your business. Yeah. It's, it's, it's your baby. So it's <laughs> just I can see the benefits of having that. Even if it's like you're doing the right thing, sometimes you just have a bad week where it's just a yeah. bunch of no's or just a bunch of negatives or bills. And you're just like, I'm doing all the right things, but I just need a lift up. Mm -hmm. I need something to, to, to hold on to that, you know, is just progresses me forward yeah just kind of it, it's interesting too because like you get to those moments and even just shifting perspective is difficult because yeah. everybody comes to to whatever they are doing with all their years worth of mindset perspective that mm -hmm. lens of you know this is how i do things and it's almost like you don't realize it until someone else comes in and helps kind of pull that back like one of my yeah <laughs> favorite things to say at Koji calls is like can i challenge that Mm. and can we twist it a little bit and see if we can view this from a different angle and all of a sudden it's like oh yeah duh do you find that a lot of it has to do because sometimes when like us or like we're close to burning out it's just so much is on our mind do you mm -hmm. find that most of a lot of your job is kind of just okay hold on let's turn that those thorns into like a, a smooth sphere you know <laughs> yeah. let's take out those thoughts that aren't productive and let's oh, yeah. let's 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 round it out the analogy i use a lot and this is just me but um you know that room in your house that is the catch-all and yeah. you just throw or stuff the in it. Yes. yeah the drawer it's yeah. that area where it's like i gotta get cleaned up quick so i'm just gonna throw it in there and i'll get it right back and then it all piles up until all of a sudden and usually it's like a guest room or a garage you need it and yeah. like the guest is coming over and it's a crazy mess. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing when you're just going, keeping every ball rolling, mm -hmm. like it's like your mind becomes that, that catch all mm -hmm. junk drawer. That's a good analogy. And it's just like, okay, this is our time to pull you out of the business. You're not answering phone calls. You're not answering emails. Mm -hmm. You're not talking to your employees. And we're going <laughs> to fly 10,000 feet above it and be like, all right, this is your junk room. Let's sort it into categories let's prioritize this let's see what we right. can take i had one person and i still love this to this day it's a little bit more graphic um, but mm -hmm. she described it as her trail of dead bodies yeah <laughs> she's I love like it. it just feels like i'm constantly no matter what i'm doing there is a trail of dead bodies being dragged behind me and i'm just so dead exhausted weight. by carrying that wow. i don't know how to even start getting these taken care of all i can do is just keep moving forward mm -hmm. and so it's like that that's what we come on to do sometimes mm -hmm. is just okay let's pause look at these which of these bodies is the heaviest mm -hmm. mm. like how do we just whoop, which one do we need to attack to give you the most bandwidth to be able to handle that moment. everything else wow that's a really good analogy like a trail <laughs> of dead bodies trail of dead bodies love... seems to resonate with women more than men <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that later. <laughs> anyway, yeah. okay. 
I, I just kind of thinking about what we were talking about before the mm-hmm, podcast mm-hmm. started. Um, so one of the greatest things that I've I heard, and I don't know where I heard it from, but I always heard a cluttered mind equals a cluttered life. Mm, yes, I've so, heard like some variation of that yeah. everywhere. So if you just like if your whole house is in shambles, sometimes that means like I'm shambled and up in here, I just need to Zen meditate or self care or something, or just, you know, to mm-hmm. keep that ball rolling. So it's just constantly like doing your business and yeah. then working on yourself. And then, so it's, it's, how do you help people do that balance with work and life? Cause that's, I think a big distractor for, for people. Oh, Cause yeah. sometimes you're too distracted with work. You can't really focus on your life or yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you're too distracted on your your life and yourself and you're going through something, you can't focus on your business. So how do you, what's your best advice for somebody? Because I think a lot of people are probably going through that right now. Yeah. So there's like a lot there. So first, like with the cluttered mind thing, I feel like a lot of us do that. And a big thing with that is when you've got, when you've got a lot of things going, it's like a mile a minute in your head, you tend to default to your, your natural solution. Mm. And everybody has different, like mine is when I am cluttered and overwhelmed and stressed out, my solution is work harder, push harder, do more, Mm -hmm. do it, do it more often, do it longer. Pause. You said your parents were in the military, right? Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. My parents are like second generation military, so I still have USAA, but it's not Um, from Okay, but you had like kind of those those strict parents is like, go, go. Yeah, I was really um, sports, like high level sports. So kind of like just strict or, um, but it's just like straight, straight shooter to the point, Mm -hmm. get it done. No excuses. Yeah. Work ethic. Go, go, go. Work Uh, ethic. Like my parents were, I'll give them that. They gave me the work ethic, but that tends to be my natural default. It's just like, just Uh work harder, do more and, and you'll succeed. Yeah. And shockingly enough, that's not always the answer. You can Mm -hmm. be hitting your head against a mountain (laughs) <laughs> and you could push through the one layer of rock, but there's still an entire mountain behind yeah. it. Or you could Good like point. look to the left and down and oh, there's a tunnel, mm-hmm. but you've got like your blinders on and all you can, you know, default to doing is, you know, chipping away Just at the mountain. Keep going at it. It'll get better, mm-hmm. but sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. So that's the color of mind. And then what was the other part of that? There was... Like your mind is cluttered. I can't quite remember all of the different cluttered mind, cluttered life. And mm-hmm. I was talking about how sometimes if you're working too much on your business, you Oh, the balance. Yeah, the balance. Okay. Yeah, because that that's a big thing in coaching too, because there's a like very fine line between business coaching and life coaching. Mm. Because your business is a huge part of your life. It yeah. is your baby. But like life coaching is a totally different realm sphere. Mm-hmm. And I am not a life coach mm-hmm. that, that is a different skill set it's different set of tools it's a different um different yeah. like that's a i need to work on myself i need mm-hmm. to work on that mental attitude the mindset the like you know it's that you know over there it's like life coaching and actual mental health counseling mm-hmm. and i tell people a lot like there's a fine line and if we're crossing it yeah i need to we're getting into the life and mental health counseling area and i can't Mm-hmm. go further here like i've i've run into a couple of situations because you build trust yeah you build that and they're balanced like you do acknowledge life it's like if your life is affecting your business yeah we we look at that and you know there's ways that you can pragmatic in through business tools and, and yeah. areas you can address life but i'm always very clear with my clients i'm here for your business and mm-hmm. your life affects your business and vice versa but there's a certain area of emotional stress and like mm-hmm true like burnout depression that i won't touch and i I appreciate you and i'm here for you but i can't be that yeah so i have to refer you out to to that type of Mm. professional and when you're ready and at the point where you're ready to work on your business come back because uh and in the book what is it the thing Mm-hmm. My JPAP is on. There's like the seven different areas of your life, and only one of them is glass, mm-hmm. and that's your family. That's yeah. your your relationships, your family. Everything else is rubber and can generally bounce back. You know your yeah. your business, your your health for the most part. Yeah. There, there's areas of your life that you can let go and you can pick them back up mm-hmm. and not miss a beat. But like the family, the relationships, the life yeah. part is not that. Right. So. For me, I always would recommend that being the priority. If it's between your work, your business, mm-hmm. and your family, I'm going to tell them to prioritize their family all day. Right. Because they can figure that out later. Absolutely. Good point. So 
how long have you been a business coach? How long have you been practicing? Oh, gosh, I think like two and a half years full time now, like okay. fully just doing business coaching. Okay, because I wanted to ask a question like, I know that COVID happened probably like when I was still in real estate when COVID was happening. Okay. So then you got into uh, business coaching, of course, after which COVID was like coming out of the fate. Like we were yeah, kind of still kind of like off yeah. a little bit. Okay. So do you find that at now kind of a couple years now coming out of COVID, I mean, it's still here, but it's not as intense as it was mm -hmm. with all the mandates. Do you find that businesses are starting to flourish from it or do you find like they're still struggling from the effects that COVID had on their business? Kind of what's your um, take on that? Yeah. So it, it's interesting because like COVID year was a great year for me in real estate. I did I, bang and <laughs> I had my best year. I, I would was... like to say we did, but we came in. <laughs> I, we were too too young, too infant in the uh, system to like, you know. See, I was a few years in. I was like, so, yeah. it's like fishing in a barrel. Everyone was trapped <laughs> at home. They wanted to talk to someone. So I was just doing my cold calling thing and people were just like, yeah, book an appointment with you. I was like, great. great. <laughs> um, but no, coming out of COVID, it's interesting because you see a lot of businesses. And, and one of my favorite questions to ask is how did you pivot? But also a lot of the businesses I've coached, um, they, they're not as affected by COVID, like there's service-based businesses. So there were slight pivots, but they weren't hit super hard, like the hospitality yeah. industry, the service industry, those things that did shut down. Uh, but if you, if you want to get speculative, it's interesting because the real estate world saw a shift last year, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. It was about October of last year. The interest rates went from being like four to five and a half and yeah. everybody went, oh my gosh, yep. you know? And <laughs> yeah. it, it turned everything upside down, yeah. but it didn't affect the business community that much. Mm. It's real estate. It is what it is. The interest yeah. rates affect it, but nobody was really thinking about it from a business standpoint. I did a six part series called mm -hmm. like the shift series. And it was a lot of based off that book, the shift it's written for real estate agents, mm -hmm. but it applies to entrepreneurs as well. It's just real estate agents know to expect the rise and fall of shifts. And yeah. I was looking at it being like, this applies to business as well. Mm. But it happens at a different time. And now we're starting mm. to see that shift. If you start okay. to look at younger businesses, uh, people are getting more worried. There's The money is not spent as freely. If you look at accounts receivable, you're going to see those dollars adding up. Because mm. one business tactic is if you can't afford it, don't pay your bills for longer. Mm. And, and it happens. So... Right now is where we're really starting to see businesses see. feel the effects of a year and a half ago, or maybe a little less, a year and three okay. months ago. The real estate shift happened, didn't really hit the business market too much until right now. And now we're starting to mm. see it like you have to do things a little differently. People are not as free with their money. They've been hit hard by inflation. The job market is no longer yeah. flourishing. Interest rates are high. So if you want to buy a house, it's going to cost more. So your cost mm -hmm. of living is going up. That pocket money is not there. And people scrutinize where they spend yep. harder. They're going to do more due diligence. They, they <clears throat> have different needs now than they did a year ago. Yep. And how are you shifting your business? So mm -hmm. we did a session yesterday for BizConnect. And one of the big conversation points was how do we find areas of opportunity right. in your business? How do you find the big areas of opportunity that you need to, yeah. to take this year? And one of them, I mean, the biggest thing is like, you got to pull your head out of the sand a little yeah. bit. What you've always done may not work <laughs> mm -hmm. now that we're going through an economic shift and nobody knows what's going to happen right? because it's not quite as predictable as real estate, which mm -hmm. like tends to go like, yeah. you know, it's, and we know which quarters are yeah. high and which quarters will be low. So do you find that when you're giving advice to businesses with, of course, being a real estate agent or keep an eye on the real estate market, you're kind of like, Ooh, I need to be able to prep them and let them know, Hey, six months from now, expect a shift because the real estate industry shifted you should start feeling an impact six months to a year from now so let's get those conversations started do you find yourself doing that i yes but oh my god <laughs> they don't want to listen gonna, i was gonna say like oh i can tell by your reaction oh like, it's no fine. we got time we that, got that's time. the thing like hurting <laughs> entrepreneurs is like hurting cats they this is the <laughs> least employable group of people in the entire world. Every <laughs> single person who's ever started a business 
I don't want to have a boss and I want to do whatever I want. Yeah. And I want to, uh, you know, do it my this. way. Mm-hmm. Like the least employable subset of, <laughs> of the human population is entrepreneurs. Yeah. They don't want to listen <laughs> until they like have, to. have a pain point yeah. and need to listen. So like, and they're obviously exceptions to that rule mm-hmm. and there are people who are consuming content and i wasn't like on a mountain marketing and shouting out this message yeah but yeah i, I definitely tried <laughs> tried last year to talk about that and got very little reception because things were still going great yeah you know when things are booming the money's coming in it's working like it's hard to talk about be like hey uh you might not be yeah let's, let's talk about that like no i'm making a bunch yeah. of money i'm fine mm-hmm. it, the, we'll write it over yeah. we won't be affected misery is unfortunately the greatest driver of change like pain is a driver of change so like when you're feeling great it's a very like i mean ideal mindset is to be doing great and be looking six to 12 months ahead and be like all right we're doing great now so we're gonna plan to use this windfall yeah but it's also i think real estate's a great example too it's like feast and famine Mm -hmm. there's a a very you know small subset of real estate agents and realtors who are not that way yeah and they take the feast and they take the famine they're like all right here's my middle ground and i'm gonna plan for that and i'm gonna you know (laughs) move things around accordingly and then you got the like i got my commission check i'm gonna go to the bar i'm gonna (laughs) buy that rolls royce i'm gonna do all this and then two months later it's like oh i didn't lead generate that month i didn't do anything yep so yeah, we're still kind of in the brink of that. Him and I were like, okay, 2024 is a different, we're going to, and you know, I think actually the first, do you find it, because I know the first, we always hear it mm-hmm. and everybody's like the first three years in your real estate career, you, you just kind of all over the place, you're figuring it out. But after that third year, you've kind of got a good idea and we are feeling that a hundred percent. I'm going into it. We're like, that's not gonna be us. I'm gonna yeah. get it from the bat, like right, just silly from the get-go. <laughs> but do you find that that's the same for other businesses as well? Like that three-year benchmark, or what? How does it go for other types of? Yeah, generally, honestly, people are like, "Oh, startup businesses, new businesses could use you," and I'm like, "Yes and no," because mm. I think you can't get into business and be completely logical about it. Because if yeah. you were, you'd be like, wow, that's a lot of work for very little guarantee. <laughs> yeah. And like even real estate, what is it? 80% of the population gets out in the first two years and mm-hmm. the top 3% are making over six figures. Yeah. Three. Mm-hmm. That's a very yeah. low <laughs> likelihood of success. It is. But you have to be almost unreasonably optimistic to yeah. get into it because uh-huh. it's going to be hard. So you need that delusion. You need, you need mm-hmm. a little bit of that just to like bite off more than you can chew yeah and year three to five it depends on the industry once you start seeing the traction you've got more money where you're like okay like i've built this up i've survived and and that's usually where i come in best Mm -hmm. because you just kind of you don't know what you don't know and you could have the best advice in the world and some people are geared to take it like when i hired my coach i was very new but i also grew up doing high level sports and i told her like i'm just gonna do whatever you tell me to Mm-hmm. I'm not going to try to think about this on my own. I'm just going to try it out. If it doesn't work, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But very few entrepreneurs are like that. I wasn't mm-hmm. raised like an entrepreneur. I was raised to just do what you tell me to. Yeah. And it worked out well for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot more entrepreneurs need to just kind of like power through it, figure it out. And when they get to the point where they're like, hey, okay, I've got some money, but I still don't have any time and I want to grow this. But like, dang, I'm working really hard for it. I, w- I want to work smarter not harder that's where i come in it's like all right yeah let's let's find a way to make this more effective easier for you and also like what what is big what is scale to you what is your exit strategy yeah and the exit strategy in business there's so many more options yeah but it's it's one of those things it's like so far down the line we're not going to think about it but it's so important you wouldn't buy an investment house without a an exit strategy why are you starting businesses without one yeah but they do. So that's where I come yeah. in. It's like, great. Okay. I don't care if your exit strategy is that you want to leave it to your kid. That's amazing. What kind of business do you want to leave to your kids? Yeah. Do you want to leave them one where they have to work 90 hours a week to maintain this? And oh, by the way, they need to learn all the million billion things you do. Mm-hmm. Or do you want to leave them a business that they can work in? It's like already a machine. It's a machine. They can maintain it. They can take this foundation and grow it and spend a reasonable amount of time per week so that they can go spend time with their family. Or do you want to sell it? Great. Yeah. Do you want a fire sale? 
where mm-hmm. people are buying your business for parts or do yeah. you want to sell it for maximum profit? Yeah. Those are different. So I know you base your, your business is based off of San Antonio. So mm-hmm. the businesses that you help, do you go visit them? Some of them, yes. Uh-huh. Honestly, no. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think. There's a few I've gone and visit, but I don't go do like a walkthrough of your business because I'm, yes, I'm coaching the business, but I'm more coaching the person mm. who's running the business. Yeah. Because a business in the same industry doing the same things will run massively differently depending mm-hmm. on who is running it. Yeah. Because, you know, if you've got someone who's like, ah, just go do this, there's no clear direction, there's no clear results that they're driving, mm-hmm. and then the people don't do it and they're like, but I, I told you, but did you really tell them? Mm. Is totally different business owner yeah. than someone who's going to come in and be like, all right, I need you to produce a million dollars in volume. Here are the exact ways that are that are avenues for you to do it. You have the autonomy to do it, but I'm going to check in you mm-hmm. quarterly here, here, here. That's going to probably drive bigger results, but it's it's very unique depending on who, yeah. who I'm talking to. So it's the person running the business that I'm coaching uh-huh. more necessarily than the business because mm-hmm. that's, I'd have to meet with everybody. Yeah. The business is not one person. It's everybody it's like in it. Whole. That's mm-hmm. more training at that point. If I'm I coming see. in and working with the whole team, it's I come in and we get everybody in a room and we talk through the, you know, the subject mm-hmm. that we're talking about and we collaborate and yeah. help everybody figure out what they're stake in the role. So I love doing that too. That's that's <laughs> great. But yeah, not on the coaching side. Yeah. So when so of course we're talking about San Antonio. Um are you seeing any trends coming up in San Antonio or like certain types of businesses or new businesses cuz San Antonio is expanding mm-hmm. exponentially. Especially like especially a few key areas. Do you find that there's more certain types of businesses coming that you're helping like kind of tell us on the business side of san antonio what you're seeing i mean like if we're looking at super high level i was talking to the vice president of the chamber of commerce yesterday and one of the big trends is that san antonio is poised from a location standpoint really well Mm -hmm. to be the hub of distribution for goods manufactured in monterey mexico Yes. So when we're talking like businesses that are poised, so there's there's kind of two areas. There's like a tech side. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of robotics, software yep. companies are coming in geared toward that kind of thing, like distribution and figuring out processes that are going to allow that to happen. So that's kind of on the tech side. I don't really work in yeah. that area. The tech world is a weird beast. They can <laughs> just operate for 10 years and never cash flow and still sell for hundreds of millions of dollars. I work more with businesses that they have to cash flow so yeah. that you can pay your mortgage and yeah. like <laughs> to survive. And, yeah. and that that's my bread and butter. But if you look at that trend, they they're planning to completely update the infrastructure of the roadway between San Antonio and Monterey, Mexico. Mm -hmm. And that means there has to be gas stations. There has to be communities. There has to be waypoints that are available along that stretch of road. It can't be underserved. Yeah. It can't be underserved. So that's going to be pretty much any trade-based business will be required because with heavy traffic become, there's development, there's neighborhoods, there's, there's hubs, there's different opportunities, Mm -hmm. there's bigger distribution centers that create jobs. So if you look at it from a 20 year perspective, that's being fleshed out. And then the roadway between Austin and San Antonio Mm -hmm. is also being worked on. They understand Austin's gotten too expensive. It's hard to afford with the property taxes, even for businesses coming in. Mm -hmm. So you see a lot of businesses looking at Texas because the, you know, laws are a little bit more business owner friendly in Texas. And Austin is just so astronomically expensive now that they're like, how do I get a budget? Mm-hmm. Austin, hello, <laughs> San Antonio. And that also brings with it opportunity because with larger companies coming in, that creates more jobs, yeah. which creates a uh, influx to the economy. There's more houses that need to be built, more homes being sold, people mm-hmm. with more money to spend. Yeah. More homes means more trades. You're going to need more handymen, more plumbers. So it all drives everything. Yeah. Um, and I don't really deal in like the sexy businesses. Like the, I'm going to think of this new idea that nobody has <laughs> ever thought of and I'm going to create a billion dollar business out of it. No. Yeah. I mean, that would be great. Mm-hmm. But more b- small businesses are trade yeah service they're not sexy they're your laundry bats your plumbers your contractors i'm so sorry no you're just good that 
stuffy nose things coming up. But but yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of demand. And oh, by the way, if you're an accountant and you're entrepreneurial minded at all, whew, all right, go, go yeah. for it. Because there is a short or not an account, a CPA. Nobody wants to be a CPA now, but like... Mm. <laughs> That's a huge area of opportunity. There's just a lot of, um, I think there's a lot of opportunity coming specifically for San Antonio mm-hmm. because the other big three are just way too expensive. Yeah. They're too like over expanded. Austin has no infrastructure to handle the amount of people that came they in. Don't. Dallas, you have to drive like three hours to make it across Dallas. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, and Houston and as Houston well. Houston, we don't even want to talk Houston's about Houston. Just, it's it's just a different food scene. Good, everything Great. else bad. Yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> shout out. Yeah, oh, we love Houston. We love but, um, Houston. We but wouldn't live there. <laughs> we don't want to live there and drive in the traffic. It's mostly the traffic for me. I'm just like, why do I have to pay a toll road every time I just drive anywhere in Houston? Yeah. So I, I see a lot of opportunity for San Antonio because with population growth, with job growth, comes opportunity in business. Yeah. So uh, we're getting close to our Q&A, but oh. I do want to focus a little bit on you for the last part of it. Now, of course, I can't even think about it. So, babe, if you can help me or if you if you think about it, there's a saying. It's like you are good at your job, but when it comes to applying it to yourself, you suck <laughs> do at what it. I say, not as I do. Yeah. Or if, like the therapist is really good at giving advice, but they won't take anybody else's or they mm. st- they cannot take advice from other people or something like that. There's something... Like for instance, or you know, I could we I could sell houses and help buyers all day. Could I? I've sold my own house, but it was a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know do I, I mean? want to? Yeah. So it's just kind of like um, you have a lot of energy. You are running your own business. You are a business coach. How do you coach yourself? What who, who motivates you? What motivates you daily? Like, do you also have a coach for your business? Kind of tell us a little bit about like your daily life and what keeps you going as a coach so i definitely have a coach (laughs) he's like don't trust a therapist that doesn't have a therapist like don't use a coach who doesn't have a coach yeah um so yeah i i've got a coach that is it still the same one that you started with elizabeth no actually um she she focuses on real estate so i switched um to a different coach when i first started coaching and i actually switched recently to a different coach Uh, one thing with coaching is sometimes like Coaching is a lot about holding accountability. It's like, hey, we worked this thing. You said you're going to do this thing. Right. Did you actually do it? Uh Now, if you didn't do it, for me, my style is to say like, okay, we're not going to beat ourselves up about it and use shame tactics. But what we are going to do is acknowledge that you didn't do it, Mm -hmm. figure out how to do it a better way, one that works for you, and then try again next week. But we don't want to repeat that conversation twice. Like, Mm. And you can start to tell if you've got the same exact topic coming up week to week your coaching style may not be effective for that person or Mm -hmm. you can learn someone accountability i do it too i did it to my last coach like i figured out what she would let me get away with Mm. and so i could talk my way around accountability and that's not good for me either i need somebody to make me uncomfortable and hold me to it um so i think that's big in coaching like i will not fit everybody's personality Mm -hmm. like some people really work well with the like do you yeah. want to succeed? <laughs> um, I don't work well from that. Um, I yeah. need somebody who can make me uncomfortable if I'm not pushing myself, but also like rein me in if I am a little mm-hmm. too hard. So like, yes, absolutely to having a coach for myself. And then also um, I actively try to network and be around people that mm. have bigger ideas than me that are doing the type of things that I'd like to be doing Yeah, and, and form those relationships to where I can, you know, reach out to them and have coffee if mm-hmm. an opportunity or if something comes up that I yeah would like to discuss with them. And so that's something I always am working on building because people, there there's someone that can do almost anything in this world and having the right person at the right time yeah. in a situation can change your entire life. Exactly. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And the people I've met and the the knowledge they have is wild. And it's just nice that when I'm presented something that's you know, I'm not quite sure how to handle it or I'm excited about it, but like, is it feasible? Mm-hmm. I've got people on my phone that I'm yeah. like, you know what? Let me, let me. Like a go-to. Well, mm-hmm. Let me just like throw this by you and let you tell me if I'm just being completely unreasonable about yeah. it or if it's something that is off wall or is this a real thing that could really work. Right. Um. So that I have a community of people also that are like striving for that. So yeah. it's just nice to talk to people and instead of them being like, 
Yeah. You, you want to do what? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, that sounds that great. Like, that. Are you thinking bigger? Like, are right. you thinking big enough? That's the question I want from my people. So, um, and then beyond that, you know, yeah, I got my dad time. I got my hard stops after three 30. If you call me, my kid will be screaming in the background. <laughs> I might apologize for it. I'm really working on that. Cause I don't want her to hear me apologizing mm. like for her being a child. And I, I set my boundaries at three 30 yeah. to, to be a mom. And that's really important. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, like, I'm just always reading. I want to, and it's not anything crazy. I read like 10 pages a night of a business book or a yeah. development book, something Self-help that something. Yeah. Is, is helpful with growth. And sometimes it, it sucks. I don't want to do it, mm-hmm. but I do it. Like yeah. it, I've got a streak going and that's been a big motivator for yeah. me. And I always try to listen to like a success podcast for 50 minutes. For me, what has really worked is like the micro growth. I'm yes. not sitting here going to a conference every weekend. Mm. Conferences are great. Don't get me wrong. I like them. But like it's expensive and it's a big commitment. Yeah. And I'm like, if I can do something for it's 10 minutes daily a day wins. and it compounds yeah. and I'm just really like, I'm bought into the compound effect yeah, slow for and personal steady wins growth. The race. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so I have this tradition. So oh, okay. I love art. And I used to do like wax painting oh, cool. and all that other stuff. So you see like that yeah. one of mine, that one over there. Not that one. I was like, <laughs> Dang, that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was not mine. <laughs> but we do like to give our podcast guests a gift because of course we do closing gifts and stuff like that. But yeah. we always want to give our guests who are on our podcast a gift. So I, um, my parents were recently going through the garage and I had a whole bunch of my canvases over there. So I brought them all back over here and I'm like, I have so many canvases to give and so many to still work on. So I'm here to give you one of those canvases. Thank you for being on our And our business card is in there too. Oh, good. Love it. Know who to call. (laughs) (laughs) So here you go. That one's made out of wax. I love it. Thank you for um, being on our podcast. I know it's sometimes... It depends on where you live in San Antonio. It can be a drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah so far yeah. west side. <laughs> but we know that you're taking time away from your family and all that stuff. So we want to just express our gratitude and appreciation for having you here. Thank you. I love it. When I was younger, I was not an art enthusiast because I'm not super creative. Uh-huh. But as I get older, I have learned to appreciate it more. Now I'm always looking for like a cool piece. And yeah. it drives my husband crazy because I'll find some weird stuff and i'm like we're gonna put this on the wall I love it. it's a duck <laughs> mounted on a plaque that i found at goodwill and he's like I, uh, I don't know about that i'm like you just just trust me trust the motif trust, trust babe the this is not weird duck on the wall yeah. I, I like it he'll, he'll probably like it okay too, actually most of my stuff he doesn't so he's gonna be happy yeah. with this thank you you're welcome Hi, yay. Um, i don't stupid. know if anybody's on there i've been kind of pretending you're not because it makes me nervous <laughs> but this is the art it it's so funny nervous. she's nervous but she also is on a podcast herself like she talks to people <laughs> so i think it's different when you it's are being interviewed vibe. yourself yeah, yeah being live vibe. is like you know if you say something it could go like really wrong yeah. but our podcast is pre-recorded so if you say something truly atrocious nobody but the people in the room yeah. will know not that i've really said anything yeah. atrocious knock on wood but yeah. you never know <laughs> you never know you, you don't know who you're gonna get you don't you really don't you had some borderline stuff yes it didn't quite get there but it could have I know. <laughs> well, you're still going on and talk yeah. to a lot of podcasts. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I am not the only host on that podcast. There's, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> I made a joke the other day. I was like, you get a podcast, you get a host, yeah. you're a host, you're a host. Because <laughs> right now there's four weekly hosts, and then they just brought on a fifth to do like a monthly. Wow. And, and like, it's just increasing the volume, mm-hmm. in different Content. perspective, different type of uh, guest base. So if you look at our podcast, Every co-host's episode is going to be a different vibe and what they feel are important questions and like what kind of direction they want to steer the conversation. Because mine, and I've always told Mark this, is like any podcast I'm hosting, my biggest focus is how do I add value to the audience? I love Bigger Pockets. Mm -hmm. Uh, Have you guys listened to that? Mm -mm. Oh my gosh. Okay. If you're interested at all in real estate investing, okay, yeah, yeah. he's over here. Gabriel's like, (laughs) yeah, of course. It's the biggest real estate investing podcast ever. Um, But it's it's just value through examples, and Mm. I love that because you can relate to examples way better than you can relate to 
to yeah to just being told what to do exactly i want you to tell the youtube world repeat your name tell us how to reach <laughs> you what do you do and take it away Heather oh boy Fain. <laughs> okay um hi i'm gonna point to the camera that i'm looking at it's coming all right <laughs> Um, my name is Heather Bame. I am a certified business coach and trainer. Um, my focus is to work with entrepreneurs and business owners who are building uh, big businesses and want to build a big life with a focus on gaining clarity on where they're going. Because I think clarity drives action. If you know what results you want out of your business and what you want your life in business to look like, we can build a path from that future vision to where you are right now and give you a plan to get there. And you can reach me um, <laughs> at my website, businessbydesigncoach.com. The coach is important because Business by Design was not available as a, <laughs> as a domain name when I went to buy it. I'm still keeping an eye on it. Um, or you can just text me at my phone number, 469-360-9116. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'll respond to text faster. <laughs> Well, thank you, Heather, so much for being here today. We truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Y'all know what to do. I say it every video. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for watching. We will see you guys on the next one. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye. <laughs> Bye.